Welcome back to Retro Rebound. In today's video, we are playing Metroid Prime Remastered. Ladies and gentlemen, got a confession for you. I already confessed it in our last video, but I'm going to confess it again. I have never played Metroid Prime in its entirety. This is my original copy from when I was a youngster. And yes, you can even see the sticker on the back. Picked it up from GameStop. Young Maddie, he didn't know any better at the time. So please forgive me for this ugly yellow label. But ladies and gentlemen, Metroid Prime Remastered finally here. After years of rumors of a remastered trilogy, we now have for $40, at least digitally currently, with a physical edition coming later. And don't worry, I'll be on top of that. Metroid Prime Remastered, just the first game. For me, this was a marvelous opportunity that I feel like I've waited way too long for. I tried this game when I was a kid. I'll explain why I bounced off of it. But now today, I wanna right that wrong. So I've played and completed Metroid Prime for the first time ever thanks to this remaster. And I was so excited to get into it and see what I had been missing. And I kept waiting and waiting for the remaster. It's finally here. Is it good? Is it worth it? If you're a newcomer like me, can you get into it, ladies and gentlemen? I got good news for you. One of the goats. Oh boy, here we go. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new here, you're into nostalgic and retrospective content with the occasional review, you're in the right place. Consider subscribing. And before we go any further, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Factor. A lot of you have written in asking me just why I look so good in a Spider-Man suit. And the answer honestly is, Factor. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. You see, you might be busy fighting crime like me, and you can't cook, you can't go to the grocery store, you want to skip all the chopping, prepping, cleaning up, all that stuff. Well, with Factor, these fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. All you have to do is heat them up and look at your boy enjoying them. Now, if you're even feeling a little bit slower some days, you have great smoothie options. I mean, these things are delicious with an assortment of 36 plus sweet smoothies, juices, and more satisfying add-ons, Factor truly has you covered. And plus, for those of you who get the takeout hankering, this is great for you. So if all that sounds interesting and you want to look great in a Spider-Man costume, just like your boy, head over to factor75.com or click the link down below and use the code rebound50 to get 50% off your first box. All right, let's look at the back of the box. Unfortunately, no manual. Again, young Maddie didn't know any better, so I do apologize, but this is my original copy, so that's kind of cool. It says, evil waits below the surface. Something sinister lurks in the depths of planet Talon 4. Interstellar bounty hunter Samus Aran is the only one who can destroy its evil, but First, it must be found. Use all technological upgrades to Samus's power suit, including the thermal and scan visors. Wield powerful weapons like the wave and ice beam as you take on the space pirates and their legions. Explore the enormous regions of Talon IV, from the frozen Fenadrana drifts to the crumbling Chozo ruins and roll into the Morph Ball to explore tight spots, bomb through walls, and roll your way out to out of reach areas. And it links with Metroid Fusion. So if you were to link this with Metroid Fusion, you'd get the Fusion costume, and you'd also be able to play the NES version of Metroid on your GameCube and save your data, which I thought was a pretty cool unlock, but you'd have to beat Metroid Fusion first. So you know me, I love those cross-contaminant releases, but let's talk about Metroid Prime. Your boy fires it up, this title screen tells me everything I needed to know. I knew I was in for a treat the moment I fired this bad boy up. I was like, okay, here we go. I guess I'm in for a, a goaded time. And the visuals, man. I mean, look, this is borderline a remake when you look at the original on GameCube and then you look at what they've done here. Down to even, you see the rain dripping off of Samus's cannon and running down her arm. You look up, you see the rain hitting the visor, which I believe was in the original, but you can see all of it in much more crisp detail. It is a beautiful game. One of the best looking on the Switch we've seen in a while. Like I played this thing docked and it didn't feel like anything was compromised. You know, for my fellow docked Switch players out there, which I know there are many of you, when I dock a game on the Switch, it usually feels like I'm taking like a 480p image and just stretching it out. This one did not look like that. The visual quality here is fantastic, and it adds a lot to the game because right when you fire it up, 
the atmosphere. Oh my God, they were cooking, man. They're, you know when you pull up to like a barbecue or something like that? It's a nice summer barbecue and you, you smell the burgers. You smell the, you smell the fries. You smell the, the hot dogs. You're like, they're, they're cooking, man. That's cooking some good stuff. And I'm just like, oh my God. Right when I fired this game up, I just knew I'm in for a treat. And this atmosphere, you could, you could feel it, man. You could feel it right on the ship, like finding all of these dead space pirates. I'm like, this is... A Nintendo IP? What happened here, man? Who killed all these fools? But seeing them like bleeding on the ground, enemies that are in containment chambers, I was kind of rubbing my hands like, wait, this is about to get kind of dark. Okay. Because for those who don't know my Metroid history, which I don't know why many of you would, a Metroid Dread was one I played. I did a little bit of Samus Returns on the 3DS. I never finished that one. But I've wanted to get to Prime for so long because it's a first-person shooter that just speaks my language. I've slowly come around to Metroidvania games as the years have gone on, and that's why I want to go back and do some of those Metroid games as well. But Prime was top of my list for sure. Like, I imagine many of you who missed out. Like, all I hear is Prime's amazing, Prime's amazing, and indeed it is is now sticking with the remaster before i go all in on you know the story the gameplay i want to talk more about the remasters qualities uh, the next thing they changed here was beyond the visuals it was the controller layout so originally metroid prime on the gamecube this was a single stick first person shooter you could argue it was manageable because you could for example hold the trigger lock on and you could try to manipulate it that way but it wasn't great there was a mod on PC that I think took this game and made it into a twin stick shooter. It's funny, it just popped up on my recommended feed and then a couple weeks later, Nintendo's like, we got the official one right here for you. Now for 40 bucks, it is asking a lot of you, if you will. You know, there's not a ton of new features here, but I think, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. It just needed to look better. They did the right update with the twin stick. That's fine with me. Otherwise, it looks beautiful, it runs well, and the game itself, you don't need to change the game. So, like I said, you start off with this very atmospheric opening, very intense, and you end up landing on the planet of Talon 4. Now, just like in any Metroidvania game, really, you start off with all your abilities, you're like, this feels good, oh, I got the grapple beam, I wonder how I'm gonna progress from here, and you realize they just take them all away from you, and you spend the whole game getting your abilities back. So for a Metroid game, of course, to work, the exploration needs to be not just good, but downright fantastic. Like it needs to be excellence because that is the key to everything here. And I had some mixed feelings early on because when you're exploring all of Talon 4, it's very easy to go down one hallway to the next to the next and get a little bit lost. And that's part of the charm, I feel, was there was no waypoints, no right direction versus wrong direction. You know, today's game design really evokes a sense of that is your main story beaten path. This is off the beaten path side content. Pick one of two roads. I will go into a room and I will see four, five doors going all separate different directions. I'm thinking this is kind of overwhelming and this is why I wanted to tell a little bit of the story of the day Maddie picked this game up. I remember getting the Talon 4 and I was wondering, back then I love shooters, like I love this type of game. Why did I glance off of it? It is very easy if you are not experienced to get lost. And I know some people will argue otherwise because you can bring up your map. And when you start utilizing that, you know, it doesn't, it's not as bad, but it is easy to get lost. And there were situations like, for example, you know, I'm down in the Magmore Caverns, I'm roaming around, and I'm just thinking like, where do I go? And I'm finding all these hidden pickups, and it's that tug of war of like, oh, I think I'm making progression, and you find like a missile expansion kit, and you go, okay, cool, but that's not where the main story lies. Like, where do I go to make progress? And I had that problem a number of times until I finally realized like, oh, I'm missing the charge beam, and I had to go all the way back to the Chozo Ruins, come all the way back to the Magmore ruins and into the Fenedreth, what, sorry, what, what did they say here on the back? I'm learning all the names still, so bear with me. They said the, the Fendrana Drifts, thank you, there we go, the snow location. And there I finally had to use my charge beam to get through there because the game says you need a concussive blast to get through. And I'm like, well, what, 
What's a concussive blasting? Maybe I gotta find a certain attack there. So, the game naturally taught me don't leave any stones unturned, because I realized some of the locations I didn't explore were where some of the tools I needed lied. And you'll be able to tell when you open the map, it'll have like orange for the areas you've explored and then gray for the areas you haven't. I didn't have this issue with Metroid Dread. That one I, I beat no problem. I shouldn't say no problem. That game was tough as nails and I loved it for that. I mean, that game was so, talk about atmosphere. That game too, oh my gosh, excellent. I, I wish this channel was around then so I could have reviewed it at the time, but it's okay. We're here now talking about this Metroid game, uh, but, yeah, yeah, I just had some trouble at times, and it involved some backtracking. That wasn't frustrating to me, but it was an adjustment period for sure. And I think if you're new and you're going into this and you're trying to abstain from using a guide, you may have a similar experience to me. Maybe you're just amazing and you can just find where you need to go with ease. But once I learned what I had to do and I, I, I started making better use of my map, this wasn't much of a problem here. And honestly, I didn't mind roaming around because the game looked amazing. And quite frankly here, uh, the soundtrack. Hey, is this in the goat conversation? Because uh, again, they cooked. I, oh my God, my ears, they've been treated so well. I can't, I can't get over it. It's like, this atmospheric, tense music. And when you're in the caverns, it's very Halo-like. I don't know if that's a great comparison to make for some of you, but it reminded me of Halo. And then there's times where when you first start the game and you're aboard the ship, the lack of music is very powerful. It's this beautifully struck balance in the soundtrack. And of course they ramp it up in bosses, but it's beautifully struck in the terms of balance where it's very tempting to want to have great music everywhere in your game. Of course it is. You want to just listen to great stuff constantly, but it takes a true creative genius, I think, to say, let's go with nothing here. That's usually not your first option in design. It's like, what can we have sitting in the background during this moment? So I just admire any game that manages to use silence in a really powerful way. It's just, it's tough to do. It's tough to strike that balance, and especially when you're cooking with such good music, and you know you've got a great composer working on a special soundtrack, it's gotta be especially difficult to be like, let's reel it in, let's not use as much right here. But overall, the world is satisfying to explore. It's really fun to play, because they do a good job balancing out the enemy diversity where, you know, in the snow area, for example, I'm not gonna try to say the name again. In the snow area, there are enemies that you can't shoot from the front. You have to jump and strafe around to the back to shoot their shells. Or in the fire area, there are these triclops that I just wanna choke out, man. I wanna choke them out in the center of the ring because these, these dang bugs, like I'll try to roll around in my morph ball and they'll just grab me and drag me all the way back and pop me up the hill. I'm like, man, killing time here. I just want to keep going. So, shout out to the Triclops. If, if, if I see one of you in the streets, we're throwing hands, alright? That's all there is to it. Watch out, Triclops. I'm coming for you. But, otherwise, really, really enticing exploration. There's no better feeling than when you find, like, the space jump boots, the morph ball, the morph ball bomb, and so on and so forth, the boost. Uh, it just feels so good to find something and think of all of the locations that you can go to. I do kind of wish... I could place my own markers on certain sections of the map. I think that would have been especially useful because what happens is when you enter a, let's say a room with multiple rooms in it, it will mark on your map that you've explored the whole thing. I would like to be able to like zoom in, place a marker down and be like, right here is where I'd like to go. But that doesn't really, to me, take away from the special nature of this game. You know, 3D, first person shooter, beautiful looking, excellent soundtrack, diverse biomes, lots to explore. Uh, I, I just, I really loved this game, man. And, and to, to kind of put the icing on the cake, the boss design was really unique. Like, I liked one of the early bosses, uh, the Flagdra, I believe it's called. This plant boss that in order for me to take out, I needed to wipe away these light beams that were keeping it alive. Otherwise it would keep regrowing. And so each phase of the boss has more light beams going down on it, and then once I take away the light beams by stunning it, I have to turn into a morph ball, roll into this little section and use a morph bomb. And I was just impressed at how they let me use this tool that was previously for really exploration and getting into those tight areas for a boss fight. It's not something I really expected. And 
I don't know if this is like a weird compliment, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I love the camera transition. When you go from first to third person in the morph ball, when you step out of the morph ball back into your full suit, I just love how the camera zooms back in. You can still see like Samus running around. It's awesome because it actually makes, you know how nowadays in first person shooters, they sell you a million and one skins. It's like, I can't even see my character, but like in this game, when they link, of course, the Metroid fusion, you can actually see that suit. And I just thought that was such an awesome little touch there. Now, when the Metroid trilogy came out, it was like an unlock through credits that you had to pay for, but I digress. I love how they handled everything. It just does exactly what I loved about Dread, the most recent one I played, where they made Samus feel like the most badass heroine in gaming, which she really is when you think about it. Like, no fear, just ice cold, the animation doing all the talking for her, especially tough in first person games, but fortunately the cutscenes are done in third person where all you hear from Samus is the occasional grunt. And I adore that. Like, again, the restraint with this game on how you know, Master Chief did the same thing, right? Master Chief was always silent and just said, he let his actions do the talking. And it, of course he would, he would speak, don't get me wrong, from, from game one he was speaking, but it just evokes that love I have of Chief and, and Metroid just brings that out of me. So it's really nice to go back to this more classic first person shooter. And it's longer than I expected, like upwards of 15 hours. I, you know, at first when I saw the $40 price tag and it's an old first person shooter, Usually, you know, here eight, maybe six hours in that kind of range uh, to, to put 10 plus hours in. I was thoroughly surprised in how it was continuing to deliver me brand new content uh, that was awesome to experience. So between the exploration, gameplay, updates, everything, fantastic job, Nintendo, fantastic job. And it's funny, someone wrote a comment in our last video. I wish I wrote down the name, so I do apologize, but you'll know who you are. Someone said when they, when I saw the direct, I was like, there's work to be done. It's like, yeah, we had, to, there was so much that spoke to Retro Rebound in this latest direct, you know, the Metroid Prime remaster, like, oh, I get to play that for the first time, finally. And yeah, it really lived up to the hype. I got to play the Game Boy Color and Advance games on the channel for Switch Online. Like, it's been a really fun week for this channel, a good peek into kind of some of the more modern coverage we can do. And, you know, Nintendo's become a big part of this channel's identity. So it's it's been fun to connect with what you all have been loving for a while. Like, I feel like finally I've, enjo I've joined this club that's like, yeah, Metroid Prime is amazing. So, fantastic game. Uh, thank you, Nintendo, for finally releasing it. And I hope that they bring 2 and 3 back because I've heard that it only gets better from here. And I'm just curious as to how. And I'm wondering, like, do I do I wait? Do I wait it out? Like, I, everyone thought the trilogy would be the full drop. But are they going to stagger it out like 2, then 3, and then finally 4? Because I want to play all of them before Metroid Prime 4 drops. And I'm just curious how... Retro is going to do it again when they when they come around for Metroid Prime 4, but there's so many Metroid games to play, and I have to admit I am a little tempted to just dive in and, and just keep, keep the ball rolling here, but we'll see. Right now, I'm just happy I finally got to play the original, beat the original, and, and see what everyone's been raving about. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got to say about Metroid Prime Remastered. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what you thought of the game. I'm curious if I'm alone on this one. I know I'm not. Do you love the game as much as I now? Let me know if you're new. Of course, I'd love to hear from you as well because, you know, Metroid is a series that I know many of us are still discovering, it would seem, based off the sales of Dread. I think it just barely eclipsed like 3 million, something along those lines. So it, that's a success, by the way, but like not comparatively speaking to Pokemon or Mario, it's not in that stratosphere, but hopefully it gets there because it's a really cool, gritty franchise with a ton of atmosphere. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think once more. And with that, take great care of yourselves and I will see you in the next Retro Rebound. Peace out.